Hello, my dear friends. Welcome to my channel or welcome back. My name is Sarita. So glad you're joining me today. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. <laughs> we have Yankee Candle Fall 2024 today. So I don't have the actual candles for you, but what I do have are these centerpieces. So Yankee Candle has released to brick and mortar locations a few of these centerpieces for the upcoming fall launch. So it hasn't officially launched. It's kind of like a soft launch. It is not available on the website. You can't even find the details about these candles on the Yankee Candle website. But if you are lucky enough to have a brick and mortar Yankee Candle store, you may be able to go in and at least sniff these six new candles for fall 2024. I don't know what the timetable is on them being formally announced by Yankee Candle and going onto their website, but I am very happy to say that I have not seen them at Target yet. <laughs> We've had this conversation. Um, Yankee Candle has, I think, um, made mistakes in allowing Target to kind of steal their thunder over the last couple years. Um, they give the new candles to Target and I believe give them instruction to hold them and not put them on the floor until a specific time. But whether Target just doesn't care or whether they have like too many balls in the air, <laughs> Target puts out the candles when they've got them. They're like, put those on the floor, right? So often in the last two years, the new collections have dropped to Target, at least on the floor, and oftentimes on their website as well, weeks before Yankee Candle actually formally announces them, or in some cases have even gotten them in the stores. And what's more, Target sells them at a lower price point. So it's just kind of a debacle because Target gets them four weeks before and then offers them for about almost 50% off of what they would origin what they would initially go for at Yankee Candle. So it's a big marketing mishap. Um, and so far it looks as though Target either does not have the fall candles or have been put under further instructions. I don't know. From a consumer point of view, it's of course great for Target to get them and for them to do that because it means that we get them sooner and we also get them at a lower price point. But if you care about Yankee Candle Company at all, it's kind of like a catch-22. It's a frustration there because you wanna support Yankee Candle, but like they've kind of made it difficult for you to do that. You know what I mean? Anyway, close parentheses. I was really happy that so far, the only like preview sniffs that we can get are in actual brick and mortar Yankee candles. And I was in Richmond, as many of you know, for the semi-annual Bath and Body Works sale earlier um, last week and um, drove around Richmond quite a bit, actually hitting up several Bath and Body Works. And guess what? In several of those Bath and Body Works locations, they were malls that actually had Yankee Candles as well. So I was able to kind of stop in and enjoy Yankee Candle semi-annual at the same time. It's a sad affair at um, Yankee Candle. That being said, Bath and Body Works isn't real exciting either. So there's that. Um, I've noticed that Yankee Candle brick and mortar stores generally like year round, they kind of have a clearance shelf. Um, and so I don't know that their semi-annual sale has added a whole lot more to that, already that clearance presence, with the exception of the fact that they are offering um, a significant part of their fleet 50% off right now. Oh, and this makes me sad. The fleet that they are getting rid of is these jars right here um, with these shapes. And this makes me un irrationally sad, and I'm I'm not entirely sure why. <laughs> so when I was a Yankee Candle, I'm like, no, why are you doing away with these? And the young men sales associates, they were like, why? Why are you so like attached to these? And then I couldn't give them a good answer. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I guess this must just be really emotional. So, and it's especially irrational in that this particular format hasn't actually been around for very long at Yankee Candle. From what I can gather, this is just a conjecture of mine, I think that they were hoping 
that this would wean everybody off of the old school apothecary jar, which has like the bulb lids on them, you know, like the old school Yankee candle. Um, so they offered this, which had some curve to it. And I think it was like kind of a sleek updated version of that old school apothecary, um, but nobody went for it. <laughs> So I think they're just cutting their losses at this point. They're like, okay, forget it, right? The difference too is that they poured these in 100% soy. But again, I think they kind of want to get rid of their paraffin fleet. And spoiler alert, that is in the works. Unfortunately, they are getting rid of their paraffin, um, which makes me sad on a certain level. But on another level, they haven't cared about that paraffin fleet for a long time. They've not invested in it. They have significantly reduced the amount of scent oils in those paraffin candles so that they're almost useless. And it may have been intentional because they really just didn't want to keep them up. Now, and, and this, is, this is what I've heard from various different people who are connected to Yankee. This could be wrong. The information I'm getting is that sometime this year or this next year, um, they are going to re-pour all of the 100% paraffins in like their soy blend. I don't think they, they don't have 100% soy. They have a soy paraffin blend. So it's gonna be the same soy paraffin blend the entire store wide, whether you get it in the apothecary jar or whether you get it in the clip art tumbler. Um, everything is just gonna be the same formula, which I think does help in terms of like consistency and simplicity because frankly, there's like a hot mess going on in most Yankee Candle stores. I was laughing with the sales associates. I'm like, you guys are a mess up in here. They just have so many um, subsidiary brands that they're also managing at the same time and competing in some ways with their Yankee Candle. Like Chesapeake Bay is I think one of the biggest ones that they have and I actually kind of like Chesapeake Bay, but then there's a lot of other smaller and more obscure ones and it clutters the store and there's just like a lot going on that's competing with each other and you're not really sure what's the difference between this subsidiary versus this one versus Yankee Candle. Like they really need to like clean that whole situation up and if that means releasing and dissolving some of their subsidiaries that I think they need to do that and the sales associates did tell me that several of them I think there was like a body care one or a lip care or something like that that was going away so um, definitely there needs to be like a streamlining of Yankee Candle it doesn't mean they can't have some subsidiaries like I said I think Chesapeake Bay is probably the biggest and the most reputable one but they really need to clean it up so that there aren't like Oh, Woodwick is another one that's like a really big subsidiary. I don't think they can do any more than Chesapeake Bay and Woodwick. I just think any of the other ones, it's just too much. It's too much. What is this obscure label? I have no idea what this is. What is their relationship to Yankee Candle? And the store associates have to field these questions every single day. What is the difference between this and Yankee Candle? All right, so close parentheses. I, in some ways, whether you're a paraffin fan or not, just having the continuity of the that soy paraffin blend throughout the entire store, same formula for Yankee Candle, will in some ways be a little bit of relief. Um, and they've definitely invested more in this particular formula. So hopefully we should see a greater investment um, going forward. One of the sales associates told me that he thought he had heard too, that when they update and pour the um, traditional apothecary ones, in the soy blend, they're also gonna take that opportunity to bump up the scent oils in all of their fleet. So I think that that's a really good move too because if you're anything like me, I'm chasing that strength and throw, you know what I mean? And the, the real hesitation that I have with soy is that it limits the amount of strength and throw and it changes the way that the fragrance comes across. And so again, more care and attention to not only a clean soy formula, but also like some care and attention to how that soy formula actually translates in terms of what you are smelling consistently would be fantastic. We all know the soy performs well in terms of burn quality, but there's more to burning candles than burn quality, frankly, and I think we all kind of know that.
All right, anyway, close parentheses. These are going away. Um, uh, to be honest, I kind of grew to like them. At first I was like, oh, this is ugly. Like, what are they doing? And again, it was confusing because they had the like old school apothecary, then they had this, then they had the like tumblers. Like, why did there need to be all three? And like I said, I think the conjecture was they were hoping that the old school folks would go to this particular design and then they ended up not. So what they're gonna do is just stay with the old aesthetic, but pour it with the regular formula and these are going away. Maybe it's just coincidental, but I just feel like some of my best burn experiences have been in these particular jars. And so maybe there's just kind of an emotional, like irrational attachment to this particular format. I don't know, I can't explain it. I do like the flatter nature of this though because I do think they store a bit more easily than the bulb apothecary jars. And I'm very fond of the bulb apothecary jars. It's very old school Yankee candle, no question. And in some ways I would be sad for it to go away, but from, I mean, now having used these for a while, I do appreciate that the storage is easier. And I, I really have loved the way that many of them have burned. And I think this is what I'm, actually very upset about in an informed way is they do have or they did have a medium size of this and the medium size stood about yay high so it was like this only shorter and that was my perfect format I'm a medium candle kind of girl this is a bit too much candle for me I burn so many candles all the time and I love that that's my lifestyle and so for me this is a little too much the medium candle was just the right amount of candle. I still got a really long burn, but it wasn't extraordinarily long and I was ready to move on. And you know, many people say, oh, but if you love a candle, you want it to be like a really big one. That's not actually true for me. I would actually rather have four medium candles of a candle that I really like than to have two really large candles. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that when you have a larger candle, the opportunities for it to develop problems or second half for it to start getting murky, it's kind of like the dregs of a wine bottle or something. It just, the longer you burn in this vessel, it can get a little bit dicey. And so when you shorten your vessel, it's just a shorter burn time and there's less opportunity for those problems to develop. Um, and it's kind of like, I don't know, if you don't have a large family, for instance, it's kind of like buying the smaller chip bag or something, you know, or the smaller cereal box, yeah? Um, because that cereal isn't gonna go stale in the amount of time that you're gonna get through it. You know what I mean? I w yes, I know that it's a better value to get the bigger cereal box, but for me, it makes more sense to get the smaller cereal box and for it to stay relatively fresh. I'd rather just open up another cereal box, pay a few more pennies. That's exactly how I feel about mediums. And what's more with the Yankee Candle mediums, they were the exact candle. So they had the two wicks and they were squat jars. And I loved that. Now, having done away with this fleet, the only medium that you're going to get now that has, um, is the, the clip art medium jar. But their clip art medium jar is now just gonna be like this. And you know, it's the really slender tumbler. So they're gonna have the clip art tumbler and then they're just gonna have a skinnier tumbler, which you may have seen in some retailers like CVS, etc. It's slimmer and it's just one wick. It's one wick. And honestly, these candle companies need more than one wick at this juncture. I feel a certain kind of way about the fact that we need multiple wicks, and we've had this conversation as well. Back in the olden times, Yankee Candles <laughs> with one wick, one wick old school Yankee Candles could scent not only your entire house, but possibly your entire neighborhood possibly your cul-de-sac area, your subdivision, from your kitchen counter. Like they were that strong, one wick, one wick. Um, for a whole host of reasons, there's almost been kind of a collusion of candle companies in the last couple decades. There are very few candles that give that kind of strength and throw now. It's as simple as that. So to be able to even get decent throw, many candle companies are having to offer a second wick, a third wick, a fourth wick. I'm looking at you, Homeworks, right? At what point, how many wicks is gonna be too many? Are we gonna need like seven wicks 
on this tiny birthday cake. You know what I mean? We all want the strength and throw. And so on a certain level, I support the fact that like, you've got to have a double wick, you know? Do I wish that we would go back to the drawing board and try to like chase that really amazing strength and throw where you only needed one wick? Yeah, that would be fantastic. And I disagree with people who are like, scientifically, it's impossible. The, 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 the diameter is not big enough and like blah, 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 you know? These are people generally who tend to be a little bit younger and they don't remember. <laughs> they don't remember the candles from of old <laughs> that had the same diameter and sometimes were even smaller, one wick, they did the job better than many of these multiple wicks. All right, close parentheses on that. I loved the medium tumbler of this because it gave you the squat, beautiful candle with the two wicks. I am not gonna want a medium candle with one wick. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Now, caveats being that at Yankee Candle, the answer to it is that they are now committing to this Bath & Body Works style three wick, which, okay. I mean, it's not particularly original, but it's fine. They are not pouring all of their candles, so far at least, in that three wick format, um, but the ones that are the best sellers, and I suspect, although it's, it's only been out for really a few months, I don't even know if it's been an entire year on that three wick vessel, but it seems to me that what they're trying to do is for the most part, offer all of their brand new candles in the three wick initially. And then when the season passes and there's kind of a winnowing process and the best candles of that collection will stay in the core collection and the other ones will kind of be quietly clearanced off. At that moment, they'll basically do away with all of the three wicks at the same time. And then in the future, only re-pour any of those in three wicks again if they become super popular. I think that aloe and agave from this year in January is one that they will probably keep around in a three wick, but I could be wrong about that. Or it could be seasonal. Like they'll do aloe and agave in the three wick in like spring or something like that. So their three wick isn't for every single candle. It's, it's a little bit more um, of a limited kind of format, unfortunately. Um, but for those of us who really do like the strength and throw, unfortunately, we, we're not gonna have a medium with two wicks, we're gonna have to go to the three wick design. Um, so I'm weirdly sad about this format going away, but I think I might be in the minority. <laughs> so I I was kind of, it was the only thing in the semi-annual sale for Yankee that I was really interested in is if I saw something that I liked in this format to go ahead and pick it up. There are very few mediums on the floor right now. They've really all gone away, um, but they are offering all of these for 50% off. 50% off is not great. Um, Yankee Candle's price point has gone up as many candle companies have. They're well over the $30 mark, so 50% off is decent, but it's not really anything to write home about, about a semi-annual sale. Um, so I would love to see these go to 75 and they may very well do so in the next week or two weeks. Um, so that's semi-annual sale. I did buy a few things here from the semi-annual sale and I will talk about them at the end of the video. But I imagine that a lot of you have joined me here today because you want to know about these new fall candles. And I apologize that we're already deep into this video and we haven't started talking about them. So let's do that right now. Okay, we have six new fall candles. Two of them did not, were not in the centerpieces, so I had to buy them in this format right here. And at least with the with this one, which is Campfire Cocktail, this one um, is just beginning to hit stores. There are a lot of Yankee candles that do not yet have this, even in any format at all. One word about the centerpieces: I don't have a centerpiece, so. If you're not familiar, centerpiece, by the way, is spelled in this like really cutesy kind of way, centerpiece. Um, so centerpiece is Yankee, essentially Yankee Candle's answer to a candle warmer and a candle crock. They're like kind of a hybrid of both of them. Um, you buy these like little plastic things and they have the wax in them. And um, rather than taking the wax out, you can actually sit the plastic 
piece right into the warmer, um, kind of like a candle crock, but also a candle warmer because it's a little smaller. It's not a huge big candle. You set this in there and I, the, this plastic must be like pretty good with like radiant heat like that and it warms it and then when you're done with it or the scent has dissipated you can take the entire plastic out and throw it away dispose of it recycle it etc so it's kind of like a a very like user-friendly mess-free kind of model of a warmer and a candle crock um, if you don't have one of their fancy things you might be able to put this, just the plastic piece, in a warmer, on top of a warmer, or um, in a candle crock. I suspect that the plastic here can withstand that, but I'm sure that Yankee Candle would say, we can't vouch for any kind of vessel other than our own centerpieces. And from a safety standpoint, I don't know that I would do it. However, I'm kind of holding it upside down and I can almost get the wax out. As you can see, it's kind of loose in here. So it'd be super easy to just throw these into the freezer and pull out just the wax piece itself. You could put that into a warmer, no problem. Or if you wanted to, you can even cut it up into fourths, into chunks, and um, use it kind of like little wax melts in that respect as well. So even if you don't have a, a, a Yankee Candle branded centerpiece, and don't want to invest in one, these are still, you can absolutely use them just like wax melts. You just may need to do a little bit of triaging with them. I don't have a centerpiece, and spoiler alert, I'm taking all of these back, not because they're terrible, although most of them are, um, but because I bought them full price. They're not on sale right now. I bought them full price just so that I can kind of talk to you about them here on the channel, but I'm and to get a sense for me of like which ones I want to buy going forward. Um, I do do some wax melting, but I'm really kind of a candle burner. And so the ones that I would repurchase here or purchase for the first time, I want to do so in one of the tumblers or in one of the three wicks. Um, so that out of the way as well. Um, let's talk about them. We've got six. Um, I found pictures and blurbs and sometimes scent notes from the European websites primarily because it's not on the American Yankee Candle website yet. But <laughs> Yankee Candle tends to treat the international audience kind of, um, they're like the, the stepsisters. <laughs> they often will get all of the candles for a year. Yankee Candle will just ship them all over there and be like, there you go, goodbye. <laughs> There's no, there's no special marketing push or release date or storefront or anything else. So it's for that reason that actually fairly early on, if you peruse various different European websites, you can usually get information on candles that are nowhere near dropping in the United States because they just kind of do a dump of them at the beginning of the year. So some of this information, I had to do some pretty fancy researching to be able to get the information for you. Um, I will put up pictures if I can. And some of these have notes and some of them don't. Once they go to the Yankee Candle website, they will have dedicated top, bottom, and mid notes. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, but all of them at least have a blurb, okay? So um, we've got six candles. One of them is a log cabin flannel. And I'll just show you the wax here, this beautiful kind of hunter green. Um, one of the things I really want to give credit here to Yankee Candle for is colors of wax. Look at the colors of their wax. It's, they've always been super savvy with colored wax. I grew up with Yankee Candle in the 80s and the 90s, and I think from that kind of developed my taste, my love for colored waxes. Yankee Candle's just always been so great with the colors of their waxes. Um, and now that's all I want. I think last year when Kringle came out with their fall line, it was bad. It was like, in terms of colors at least, it was like, seven shades of brown basically and I remember saying at the time this is an amateur mistake that Yankee Candle would not make does not make um, if they have fall candles they know they need a blue they know they need a green they need an orange they need a red they need a taupe they need a yellow they need a gray like they just know I, obviously like the autumnal colors are limited but like there's still a range of them and Yankee Candle just does the colors really really well so I want to say that right off um so anyway log cabin um the blue one here is paddling on the lake looks like this 
These are the photorealistic labels, by the way, that you will see in the traditional apothecaries. The clip art is a little bit different. Um, then we have Woodland Weekend Memories. Looks like this. And it's kind of a gray wax. Pumpkin Cinnamon Swirl looks like this. Kind of a brick orange, brick red. And Campfire Cocktail, beautiful wine color. Last but not least, Afternoon Scrapbooking in kind of a taupe color. Okay, so those are the three. Um, I will say right off, this is kind of a yikes of a collection. Um, it's not great. It's not great. I don't think it's as good as their Target exclusive Caribbean collection that they had in the summer, which I think was thoughtful and was diverse, made sense, gave us a lot of different smells, and many of which were like actually quite good. Um, not as good as their January collection with the Under the Desert Sun, which again, although it was small, was thoughtful, diverse, made sense, cohesive, etc. cetera. Um, this one is, just seems phoned in. Um, I was watching Sean from Hearthside, um, I don't know, maybe it was a few weeks ago, something like that, and he mentioned that Yankee Candle, said something like Yankee Candle doesn't do fall very well. And I thought to myself, is that really the case? Yankee Candle doesn't do fall very well. I don't know that I had ever thought that, but maybe it is true. Because when I try to think of like, what great fall conceptuals does Yankee Candle have that they're known for? And like, the only fall candles that I could think of were like a lot of apples, like Macintosh apple, for instance, and then spice pumpkin and pumpkin apple and Cranberry chutney, I guess, although cranberry chutney could be more of a holiday one. They do the gourmand and the basics actually kind of well, and they think they do apples well. I used to love spiced pumpkin, but then it started smelling weird like a decade ago. So then I was like, maybe I like pumpkin apple better. So I went to pumpkin apple, but now that kind of smells weird too, right? I don't know. I mean, definitely Bath & Body Works does pumpkins better, I think, than Yankee Candle does. Although Yankee Candle may still do apple better than Bath & Body Works does. I don't know. Although Bath & Body Works does do apple. Anyway, maybe Sean is right. Maybe fall is just, they do holiday very well and they do a lot of other things really well too. Fruits, florals, you know, more versatile season wide kind of candles. Maybe it is true that they don't do fall well, which is so bizarre given the stature and reputation of Yankee Candle and also the fact that like fall home fragrance is like prime time. That's prime time for candles. So it just seems odd to me, especially given their like country, cozy kitchen kind of vibe from the 70s that they wouldn't be like brilliant at fall candles. I don't know. Or maybe it's just the new Yankee Candle that doesn't know what to do with fall. All right, let's start with afternoon scrapbooking, which is actually, I think, the standout of the collection, the one that I will 100% be purchasing, so let's start out positive. Um, afternoon scrapbooking, the clip art jars, which I do not love, I, I think they're tacky, and I've said this before, I think they're tacky, I think they're cheap looking, like, Oh, it's no, it's, it's a no for me. Um, at least with like these ones that they're doing away with, there was some like thought and care to like center the clip art, make a nice little label. It just looks like more put together and less chaotic and like just thoughtless. Yeah. Does it still kind of look like a Glade candle? Yeah. It does, it still looks cheap, but the clip art ones look even worse in my opinion. I am so not a fan of them. At any rate, here's a taste of what, on the bigger jars, the clip art is gonna be like all around the jar, kind of looking like this. This was one of the weird ones that I think, I don't know that the international folks are getting this candle, so the only pictures that I could find of it was very weirdly 
pictures of this candle in the discontinued format. So this is one of the pictures that I found and I ended up putting it on the thumbnail because otherwise there were no other pictures of this yet. So this, and then it also came in the medium one as well. Um, but like I said, given that this is being discontinued, we're not gonna see it in this format. All right, so afternoon scrapbooking, the blurb here is, spend the afternoon scrapbooking by the fire in your cottage, surrounded by notes of soft leather, apple, and glowing amber. If you like warm cashmere from Yankee Candle, you'll love this fragrance. So they kind of, actually it's very smart. They have kind of a, a marketing like suggestion there. If you like this, you'll like this, kind of like in Netflix or something like that. Um, all right, so top notes here, there's a lot, so gird your loins. Top notes, golden apple, bergamot, lemon, ginger, nutmeg, and autumn air. Just the top notes. Mid notes, eucalyptus, leather, clove, labdanum. Base notes, patchouli, cedar, amber, embers, musk. Okay, that's a lot. It's a lot. You don't know quite what it is that you're gonna smell. It is such a beautiful candle. Oh gosh, I'm here for this candle. It's gorgeous. I would say that the most dominant fragrance note here is wood. It's a lot of wood and it's that kind of bright, sweet, warm, dry, freshly hewn wood. I think they're saying cedar. It smells to me very reminiscent of Bath & Body Works Palo Santo note. So I guess no surprise that I love this candle. Because the, the um, wood note has a very like um, exotic, almost wine-like quality to it and a little bit spa-like. And it could be the connection of the cedar along with many of these other notes here, like eucalyptus, clove, leather, patchouli, amber, and then weirdly like the apple, the bergamot, the lemon, the ginger, all of these different things are contributing to give you a wood smell that is just rich, deep, but also, like I said, bright and warm at the same time. Gosh, that's great. It's great. I would say it's at least 70% wood, um, strong wood. And it's not a wet wood, it's a very dry wood. And then there's just this amazing, intriguing, kind of um, bright herbal kind of notes, and almost a cool herbal note. And I think that's from the eucalyptus and also from the clove, and then also from the more fruitier, like brighter fruits, like apple bergamot and ginger. Oh man, that's good. Connor from Connor loves candles. It's gonna hate this candle, I think. I could be wrong because there is something in the combination of the musk, the patchouli, the eucalyptus with the ginger that is in the clove that is going just a little bit anise, even though anise is not listed here and I don't think it's in the candle. It goes anise for me and the anise note is wet and sweet and actually is coming across more like a black licorice than like a dry baking anise, if that makes sense. I don't think he's gonna like it because he doesn't like licorice notes at all, but it could just be my nose. There may be other people that smell it and are like, I'm not getting licorice at all. And there is no licorice like note here. It's just the way that all of these things are contributing that kind of, to me, does smell anise licorice just a little bit. It's not a turnoff for me. I don't do black licorice candy, so it doesn't necessarily go like Halloween or candy. And it is just kind of a nuance underneath the wood, but it's there and I just kind of wanna flag that for those of you that are super sensitive. It's an intriguing candle, it's balanced, it's nuanced, it's it's really pleasing. Yeah, I mean, this is the standout of all of them. It's the most thoughtful, it's the most thought and care has gone into it. 
maybe that's indicative of the scent list here. They're proud of it, you know. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. It does lean a little bit cozy, cool weather, especially with the clove and the patchouli, but this is actually the one fragrance of all of them that you might be able to get away with burning at other seasons or earlier in the fall, etc. cetera. Um, because it does, especially with like the eucalyptus um, and the fruits and the fact that it's a very dry wood, kind of go possibly a little bit spa-like and in that sense could be burned a little bit more versatilely. This is a great one. I will definitely be buying this one, no question. Okay, so let's go to Paddling on the Lake. Paddling on the Lake um, looks like this. It's a blue candle. So the old, so the, the um, it's gonna come out in the tumbler with this particular label right here, Paddling on the Lake. It'll look like this. Um, and then it'll come out in the clip art and the clip art jar looks like this. And unfortunately it just looks so redundant of a candle that I think came out last year called Lakeside Lodge. Looks like this, like, <laughs> it just kind of looks like Yankee Candle is scraping the bottom of the barrel and phoning it in. Like both concepts are fine. They're both like aquatic and um, like, fall autumnal leaning there's no question but they look very very similar and back to back year to year like you can't do that you can't do that it just looks like you're really phoning it in yeah all right paddling on the lake all i have here is a blurb i don't have notes um inspired by notes of lake mist fresh mint and cedar wood again Grab some friends and a wooden canoe to enjoy the fall foliage from the water. So it's a blue color like this. Okay, so there are two candles in this collection that are kind of middling, that are not brilliant, but I'm not convinced that they're terrible either. They're kind of in the middle. This is one of them. Um, if I... If I'm not mistaken, Lakeside Lodge from last year was just like a generic men's cologne. Am I correct about that? It's just from my memory. If that's the case, this one is a little bit better and a little bit more intriguing. So it is a very, it's a beautiful aquatic, if cliched. It's an aquatic note, very strong aquatic, almost with a brininess to it, almost with a salt. And then the most beautiful aspect to this one is mint. And I'm not a mint person and I don't like mint in my candles, but this mint is beautiful. It's soft and it's sweet. Um, so I, I was just burning this yesterday, which is why it's on my mind. Kringle Candle came out with a candle this summer called Cotton Flowers, um, which nobody seemed to like and I think is really beautiful. It was very mismarketed and very misnamed because there's no cotton in it at all. There's no linen, there's no cashmere. I mean, it's not a laundry scent at all. What it is is freesia and mint. And it's kind of this mint right here, this beautiful, soft, sweet mint that goes a little bit spa, but not like medicinal or aromatherapy. I mean, it's just like the most beautiful and palatable kind of mint that is just fresh and clean. Um, and it doesn't overwhelm the fragrance. It plays well with other fragrance notes. In this case, I don't know if it's, I think there probably is a little bit of floral in here. Just a touch, kind of like an aquatic floral, like a lotus or something like that, yeah. And there is something that's kind of fruity. It's like a, a melon finish. And to be honest, that candle from Kringle, um, I talked about it at the time, freesia is one of those white florals that is not only fruity, but also aquatic. And so it's a beautiful vibe and it fits so well with the mint. So there's the sweet mint against like the aquatic, the fruity and the floral. And the aquatic, the fruity and the floral are kind of cutting the mint a little bit in the same way that the mint is cutting them, yeah? it's perfect and it all has that amazing dewy aquatic peaceful calm spa-like green 
quality to it. While at the same time, the floral, the sweetness of the floral and the fruit, giving it a roundness and a sweet, almost feminine nature to it, which is just really welcome. Um, this one is not quite as good as the cotton flowers is. It does have bergamot and musk. Bergamot at the top, musk at the bottom. So it does kind of come across as a masculine leaning kind of cologne conceptual. Um, but because the mint note is so unexpected and so lovely, as is the aquatic, you get the sense that this is, it's not just like a really cliched generic men's cologne. I would call this kind of like a, a third generation men's cologne. So first generation men's cologne would be like Midsummer Night from Yankee Candle, which is just like heavy as heavy can be, dark, cliched, just standard men's cologne, not nuanced. Second generation men's colognes were getting a little bit more interesting, but still had a very heavy formulaic bergamot musk, a little something in between, yeah? I don't know what the what would be a second gen cologne for Yankee Candle because it's been a while since I've like burned a lot of those candles. Um, so when they were developing them, I I was burning them less and less. At Bath and Body Works, Ocean, for instance, would be a good, um, I think a good example of a second generation men's cologne. I would say this is third generation. It's a little bit more interesting than the second gen, and they're starting to soften up the formulaic bergamot musk um, and really allow the inner notes to come forward with a little bit more brightness um, and importance, yeah? Um, that said, we'll have to see how it burns. It could just be very generic once it's burned and it doesn't have enough brightness and authenticity to be truly remarkable. So we'll have to see on that one. Log Cabin Flannel, this is the other inner candle. This is the mid, another mid candle here, which is not terrible, but it's not great either. Um, and actually I think it's a little bit less promising than paddling on the lake. So log cabin flannel, great marketing, great color. Um, the blurb here, and unfortunately, yes, I do not have any notes on this. It's a bit chilly in your cabin. Grab your favorite cozy flannel and warm up with the scents of black pepper, cinnamon, and sandalwood. On paper, those look really interesting, at least to me. And I'm very happy to say that the cinnamon here is not a red hot cinnamon. And to be honest, I'm not getting a ton of cinnamon from this candle, so it's interesting that they kind of call it out. This is... This might be a third gen... This might be a third gen um, men's cologne, too. It is kind of cologne -y, but the amber and the bergamot, while they're there, and the musk, are... Not the loudest parts of it. The inner notes of clove, especially. It's like a clove, tobacco, leather, reminiscent kind of fragrance. Even though um, this scrapbooking one actually calls out leather, this one has true leather-like notes in it. So once we see the actual um, dedicated scent note list, we may see that there is leather or patchouli in here tobacco even. It's got those like usual tobacco kind of um, smells too. There's kind of a dark um, muted clove anise kind of situation. Um, yes, there could be cinnamon. I think there is cinnamon, but it's actually playing second fiddle to clove, I think. Black pepper, I'm not getting a whole lot of black pepper, at least in an individuated way. But it is, like I said, a muted, bassy kind of spice here. And it's not particularly sweet. So in that sense, black pepper. Think molten brown. This is a very, like, kind of conceptual, very similar to Midnight Cocktails, for instance, from Bath & Body Works, except that this one is much more muted than Midnight Cocktails. Midnight Cocktails is aggressive. This one is a little bit more subtle. It's more muted. It's more faded smelling and maybe a little bit less bright 
and authentic, but it's in that genre. So if you like midnight cocktails, you'll probably like this one as well. I am a little concerned about the strength and throw on this one. And I don't think, I think the mint note here is just so beautifully executed up against the other elements, the aquatic, the floral, the fruit, um, that even though it has, again, probably amber, bergamot, and musk, it just has a little bit more of a fresh, unexpected vibe to it. Both of them are kind of men cologne conceptuals. Um, and Log Cabin is coming out um, in the apothecary jar um, with this label on it. It will also come out in the clip art. The clip art looks like this. And um, I also got a picture of a three wick candle that was coming out for Log Cabin. Looks like this. Um, this might be the international version. Um, so I don't know if this is the exact label that we're going to get. It's not a good label. <laughs> I think Yankee Candle is still trying to figure out what their aesthetic vibe should be for these three wick candles. Definitely not this, um, but that may be what we're stuck with this fall. All right, let's go to Campfire Cocktail. Campfire Cocktail looks like this, beautiful wine color. Obviously, it'll come out in this clip art, which looks like this. It will also... Um, come out in the apothecary style, which will look like this with the photorealistic label. This is what that looks like. Um, this one, I don't know that the international audience has gotten it um, or will get it. And there are only select Yankee candles that have these. They kind of been trickling into the store after the other ones. Um, so, and I don't have scent notes, but I do have a blurb. The blurb on Campfire Cocktail is... End the perfect fall day by sitting around the fire with a fruity cocktail in hand, enjoying the swirling scents of apple rum, golden apple, and plum. Beautiful. This is a lovely candle. It's basic, basic, basic. Very basic B um, for the fall, but it's really beautifully done. It just is. Um, this is a cross between like a craft store vibe, like Michael's, um, craft store spice with country store spice. So they're kind of different vibes. I don't know if you've had the pleasure of being able to visit one of those like mom and pop country stores in rural areas. They have a specific kind of smell, very similar to Michael's craft store, but a little bit more authentic, a little deeper, a little richer, a little bit more cacophonous, a little bit more potpourri, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so it's kind of like the best of both of those worlds. Um, the, the, the craft store spice can sometimes smell a little stale, a little canned, a little bit shallow. The country store vibe deepens it a little bit. And then what I love about this is that it's a basey candle and it's a fruity candle, but the fruits here are very dark and jammy. It is a ton of apple, a ton of apple for sure. And it's got the cinnamon and it's got the cloves and it's got the nutmeg and it's got the anise and it's got the ginger. But the fruit here is jammy dark. And they mentioned plum and I think plum is right. Um, I was almost gonna say currants possibly, possibly some like blackberry in there or raspberry, like it's that kind of darkness. And it almost up against all of the spices has a wine-like quality to it without being overtly boozy. It's beautiful. Like I said, it's kind of a fall cliche. It doesn't try to like reinvent the wheel. Um, but I think that that's really smart from Yankee Candle, especially when they're struggling here with these like fall conceptuals that are all kind of versions of like men's cologne concept. It's like they, they're not quite sure what a fall conceptual should smell like. And it's so unfortunate because what's missing here is like your outdoorsy kind of candles with the smoke, with the wood, with the pine. There's like a lot of really outdoor smells that they can and should be incorporating into their candles rather than just giving us like versions of men's colognes. Um, so as they're struggling, this is the kind of candle that makes sense and it's smart. Give the people what they want. There is something just so comforting about having a basic pumpkin spice candle, for instance, a basic apple spice candle. And this one is just executed really well. 
It's basic, it's comforting, but it also has kind of a stereophonic feel about it. It's not shallow. It's firing on the craft store, on the country store level. It's firing with Apple, like foremost, as it should be, but it's giving us another like layer of darker fruits that are again, rounding out that Apple and giving us a little bit of a depth that otherwise sometimes is a little missing in just generic apple spice candles. This is really nice and I might even purchase it even though it's like I said so generic. This is your like counterpart to pumpkin spice but it's really beautiful and have I smelled worse versions of this candle from other candle companies? Yes! Go back to basics, do them well. I think a lot of people are going to really like this candle. Um, in that same vein, I think I may purchase this one, Pumpkin Cinnamon Swirl. And this photorealistic label is what the apothecary is going to look like. The clip art looks like this. And yes, this one is coming out in the three wick as it should. Here's what the label looks like. Again, really bad. It's such a missed opportunity. I mean, when you just compare these to like Bath and Body Works three wick labels, it's like, oh my gosh. I've even seen Ulta do like better and more classy. Okay, maybe these are just the international labels. Let's, 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 let's hope. Okay, pumpkin cinnamon swirl. I have a blurb and I have notes. The blurb is the sense of vanilla, brown sugar, toasted nuts, and fall spices blend to create a sweet autumn delight. No surprises there. And also no real surprises in the notes either. Top notes, cinnamon, caramel, clove bud, mid notes, nutmeg, pumpkin dough, weirdly, toasted pecans, base notes, vanilla, brown sugar, and musk. And I think all of you are saying, I'll check that box. Where do I sign? Right? Um, as with the campfire cocktails, again, no crazy innovative things, no like sweet vanilla or chata kind of interpretation. This is right straight down Woodward as they say. Um, and yeah, and I'm very happy to say that it smells great. It does smell like a million Bath and Body Works candles, but it's very nice. And frankly, I don't know that Bath, that Yankee Candle does the pumpkins quite as well. This one is very decent. It is very strongly brown sugar caramel molassesy. No question, this is a basier pumpkin spice candle. Not as many bright notes in it. Everything's kind of deep and dark and muddled in here. It doesn't have like a true roasted pumpkin smell, although it does have a pumpkin smell, there's no question. So I wouldn't say that this is like a bright, fresh, authentic, botanical, like pumpkin carving kind of pumpkin, the way that like Bath and Body Works does it. This is very deep and like I said, very caramel forward, but the caramel at least that I'm smelling on cold here is not cloying. It's not so like, sugary, sparkly sweet that you kind of feel like it's at least appropriate for the season, especially the way that it is very thoughtfully mixed with the brown sugar and the molasses to kind of ground it and not allow it to go into like that crazy candy kind of dimension. There is kind of a vague toasted praline kind of note as well and that goes in with the brown sugar and the caramel. Dough, I'm not getting a whole lot of dough or crust with the exception of like the extent to which like praline, for instance, would invoke for you something bakery-ish, but it's, there's no bread note, there's no cake note, there's not even an icing note or anything like that. So it's really just a very dark kind of pumpkin spice. When um, Bath & Body Works came out, what was it, Praline Delight that they came out with last year, which I didn't think was that great of a candle, this smells to me like Praline Delight. This is what that candle should have smelled like, and I think it's what everybody expected that candle to smell like. It's this one, but there is a heavy amount of pumpkin in it to make it not just a praline candle. It's a pumpkin praline. It's really, really beautiful, and that's a lot for me to say because I'm not a gourmand person, but I may actually pick this one up. You're always looking for a basic pumpkin spice. This is definitely a basey, caramelized, like, 
toffeed one and it's it's just actually really nice and I think does a pretty good job despite all of those sugars and caramels of keeping the sugar content where it needs to be. Last but not least, weekend Woodland Weekend Memories looks like this. You cannot say that 10 times fast. The um, apothecary will have this label right here and then the clip art looks like this. And it is also coming in one of those terrible three wicks that looks like this. Um, and this one has the most unusual scent notes, very unexpected on paper. So the blurb says, savor each moment of your woodland adventure with notes of soft amber, autumn fruits, and creamy coconut milk. If you like amber and sandalwood from Yankee Candle, you will love this fragrance. Top notes, bergamot, orange, pear, already I'm cringing. Mid notes, jasmine, why? Vanilla, coconut milk, why? Base notes, cozy amber, woodland moss, and sandalwood. I was intrigued by this and I was hoping for the best because I do love coconut and while it's a little bit of a non-traditional fall smell, I was interested in where they were going with this, especially with the vanilla, with the moss, with the sandalwood. Um, unfortunately, this is definitely the worst of all six of them. It's a generic men's cologne. Oh my gosh, I've smelled this so many times. <laughs> and on this smell, there's something a little Baccarat rouge about this. I know, I'm like becoming one of those girls that can like smell Baccarat rouge in everything, right? But I really think, actually, I do think it is but it's a very men's cologne-ish version of Baccarat Rouge. So First Sight from Bath & Body Works is actually a little bit more masculine leaning as a dupe of Baccarat Rouge. It's very close to Baccarat Rouge and is a very excellent dupe. It is slightly less sweet than Baccarat Rouge and in fact, weirdly, they tried to market it for men on the understanding that it was a little bit more masculine, but it, it's not masculine enough for it to not just be a straight up dupe of a woman's perfume, yeah? This one actually, if it does smell a little bit like Baccarat Rouge or In the Stars, if you're that kind of a person, this is a very masculine version of it. So this is for sure a masculine twin of In the Stars or Baccarat Rouge, um, which is very heavy on the bergamot, very heavy on the musk, too heavy in my opinion. I'm not getting any coconut. I am getting a ton of amber, a ton of bergamot, a ton of musk, and a ton of sugar, which is exactly what kind of in the stars is as well as Baccarat Rouge. And there is a little bit of a fruitiness and that's very in the stars as well. In the stars has the fruit component. Baccarat Rouge has less fruit in it. Um, now that I'm thinking of it as Baccarat Rouge, like I'm liking it a little bit better than I did before because Baccarat Rouge is a phenomenal fragrance. I don't know where they were going with coconut milk though. I really don't. I was prepared to say that this one was terrible and I do not recommend it. Um, it's just so cliched. This is like a second generation men's cologne. Um, but now that I'm appreciating some of the Baccarat Rouge nuances in it, maybe it'll be okay. I don't know. Of the six, I think it's the worst and I think it's the most cliched and I think it's the most uninteresting. So there's that. But I suppose we'll see once we burn it. Um, in terms of other things I got for a semi-annual sale, I threatened it and in fact it happened. Here is my sweet vanilla horchata. I said that when it came to semi-annual, this is the one that I would repurchase, not aloe and agave, and in fact I did. It was a hot mess, does not smell like vanilla horchata on any kind of level, not at all, not even a gourmand. But man, the cardamom note in this is so exotic and intoxicating up against the vanilla and the clove and the musk and the floral, like deep, heavy, exotic, like flowers. They just should have marketed this as like an exotic, like almost like Moroccan experience or something like that, you know? And they still could have kept it in the like desert motif kind of thing. It's just on no level a gourmand at all, let alone a horchata, horchata. 
Yeah, but I really liked this candle. Unfortunately, had no strength and throw, but I didn't have it in the three wicks, so I'm hoping a little bit of it'll come out. Also, this candle is never coming back because I think I'm the only one in the world that enjoys this candle. I just thought it was the most ambitious of all of them. Did it land? Was it successful? No, but I just have to kind of give bonus points for something that's like original, you know? that's thinking outside the box. I'm here for it. The young men at the register tried to talk me out of this, but I could not be talked out of it. Art in the park. I've always liked the smell of this, although I've never burned it. And they actually had it in one of these tumblers, and I was gonna buy it in that tumbler, and they were like, if you buy it, then we're gonna judge you so hard. Don't say that you like that candle. It's a terrible candle. And then I felt terrible, and I was like, eh. Okay, I guess I'll just get it in a tiny one and see what I think. They're like, okay. And they were nice. They were like, if you really want it, just call the store and we'll hold one for you. But we will judge you if you like come back for it. I was like, okay. <laughs> Art in the Park was one of their candles that came out like last summer, I think. Um, let me see. Do I have Art in the Park? Yes. Art in the Park. I don't have notes on it. It was just notes of green apple, fragrant florals, and a base of smooth woods. Yeah, to me, this smells like uh, a woody floral with a fruity finish. And I really like it. I just do. I receive that people don't like it, and maybe I shouldn't. They said that it smelled like can't like waxy. I don't know. But is that a mistake? Like, I don't know that the fragrance is supposed to smell like that. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. I got these because they were 75% off Farm Fresh Peach right here, um, mainly just to use a coupon, but I'm always chasing a peach. This is an OG Yankee candle, um, and I've never burned it. It's very apricot peach, which is fine. I'll try it, we'll see what's up. I bought one of these because I love Kitchen Spice. Again, OG Yankee candle fragrance here with Kitchen Spice. Oh my gosh, if you haven't tried it, you have to. It's all of the usual suspects in terms of kitchen spices, and yet somehow there's a freshness and a brightness and an authenticity and something unexpected about it at the same time. Kitchen spices, cardamom, orange, clove, nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger, almond, and musk. Man, this candle is fantastic. There's always been some nuance of tea to me, T-E-A, like the tea, like the beverage, and I don't know why, it's not listed, Maybe it's because of the bergamot and the cloves. It kind of goes in an Earl Grey direction. I don't know. It's just a nuance. Gorgeous fragrance. And to be honest, I don't know if I've ever burned it. Okay, and then you guys are gonna laugh. What? Movie Night Coco, which was on clearance. By the way, here's one of their vaunted clip art designs with the craziness. So this is very similar to Sweet Vanilla Orchata in that it's branded as a gourmand and is in fact not. Oh my gosh, this candle smells so good. And to be honest, a little bit like sweet vanilla horchata. It has a very strong like vanilla note in it up against some unexpected floral and spices. Oh gosh, I'm here for it. And it does have a tiny bit of a chocolate nuance, but think like cocoa roasted chestnut kind of vibe from Bath and Body Works, if you know what I mean. Just a little bit brighter and fresher because it has floral in it. We will talk about this in the future. This smells so gorgeous, but nothing like a hot chocolate. So I'm gonna do this one for Christmas in July because again, it's one of Yankee Candle's like holiday branded candles that like is not a holiday candle. It's not even a gourmand. Last year for Christmas in July, I did this one, Spun Sugar Flurries. Oh, I just bought this off of eBay because I love this candle. Again, marketed to the holiday season as a cake, as a sugar cake, and it is a floral laundry day scent. I don't know what's going on at Yankee Candle. I mean, they take the cake in terms of the like bait and switch. I know there've been complaints about Bath and Body Works about their like, oh, their gourmands smell more conceptual than they should. And it's true, many of them have been. Nobody does the bait and switch gourmand, <laughs> like mismatch like Yankee Candle. I, I'm tempted to think that they like have like the people that develop the fragrance over here 
and the people that develop the concepts and the design over here and they just like don't talk to each other at all and then at the end of the year they just like put all of their ideas respectively in a big tub and just like pull them out like at their holiday party great this fragrance is going with spun sugar flurries done like no effort at all to like link concepts with fragrances none it's just like a secret santa kind of moment or something you know <laughs> or like there's white males all sitting around the conference table laughing uproariously <laughs> Doug, that's great. We'll call it sponge sugar flurries. <laughs> Hilarious. And this is what we've got. Like, is this a joke? <laughs> anyway, I, I'm very happy to look past the packaging and put it in some sort of, you know, candle sleeve. Because these two fragrances are right up my alley, regardless of what it is that they're supposed to be. So look for this one in July. I'm really happy to burn it. But I receive and completely understand the uproar over this. It's absurd. It's absurd. It's just, it's insulting to all of us. It's brazen that they would give this to the audience. They would give this to the people. And they would think that they were getting, why should they not? A hot chocolate fragrance with peppermint and sprinkles and whipped cream and marshmallows that all right that's what i've got for you my friends the inky candle 2024 most of these candles as i said at the beginning they are not candles that you can burn at any time other than fall and frankly most of them are deep fall fragrances they're not even early fall fragrances so no rush on them at all i'm sure we'll see them at target long before the point that you will want to buy them and you will probably have all kinds of sales too so but just be thinking about it, thinking about maybe which ones kind of float your boat a little bit. And I hope this was helpful. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I will catch you in the next one.